What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Chad Townsend Show. And as always, today's episode is brought to you by playersgolfclub.com.au. Head over to the website, get your merchandise, your polos, T-shirts, hats, accessories. Uh, We've got it all. Everything you need for your next golfing adventure, golf day. Um, Plus, our golf day is this Friday the 13th. It's sold out. 120 golfers vying for the trophy, the first four-ball Ambrose tournament we're running. We're super excited. We can't wait. So I'm sure you guys will see much of that um, after it's happened. And as always, I'll bring him in, uh, Mr. Elliot Lovejoy from Triple M, mate. Thanks for joining us again, buddy. You shaved your mustache. I did. What do you think? I think I miss it. Mm. I think I miss it. I actually thought to myself, I was like, I'll shave it, but will I miss it? And I shaved it and I didn't miss it. Right. And you know, like if you shave your head, you yeah. know, you're like, oh, I wish I didn't do that. But I shaved the mustache and I was like, yep, I'm glad I it did that. It was time to go. It was time to go. What's I mean, next? Chin strap. Um, mullet. Mullet? Mullet's next. Right. Actual? Yeah, like not like Ruben Cotter mullet, right. but like just a little sneaky. A little off, hybrid. Yeah, a little hybrid mini one okay. off season. So, yeah, I always like to mix it up in the off season. I know actually. you do. Mate, let's get straight into it. Mm. Well, um, before we do get into the, the Pacific Test preview for this weekend, some huge games, let's quickly recap uh, the battle at the Reef on the weekend. You mm. and I and producer Dale, both, all of us, um, had a great night on Saturday night at the Townsville uh, Convention Centre. Um, mate, your any key takeaways from the night for you? I, I know that you've been saying the whole time, I wouldn't get in the ring and you're firm on that. I kind of, I watched that Hodges-Cooper fight first up and I thought, oh, like I can see the appeal. I can see why boxing would be fun. Like They both looked like, yeah, they landed a couple of shots, but they had a good time. Then we got to the Junior Paolo-Ben Hannett fight and as soon as Junior landed that first massive shot, I was like, nope, (laughs) I will will never. It was props to them. I I, I don't know if you've spoken to any of the blokes that have gotten in the ring like Jace. I know you know Regan pretty well as well, but... They must, they must lose sleep during the week before going into it. You must be so scared. Yeah, well, at the press conference, that's all they were saying. Both Big Reggie and Jace were very, like, yeah, I'm pretty nervous. Mm. Like, in footy, you can obviously rely on, you know, the rest of your team to sort of help you out. But only in boxing, it's like you are on your own. Um, that fight, you just said the first one of the night was Hodges versus Cooper. Mm. It was billed as an origin battle. Hodges got the victory. We both picked Hodges. Uh, actually, I picked Cooper just to make things go. interesting. Yeah. But Hodges obviously had uh, a couple fights previous, which definitely helped him, you'd say? Yeah, it was, it was fun watching it with you and, and with Dale because none of us know boxing, right? <laughs> so uh, even mid-fight, we're trying to predict. We're like, well, well, Hodges looked like he landed a body blow. Does that mean anything? Uh, that kind of made the results more fun because a lot of the time with the close fights, I didn't really know what way it was going to go. Yep, definitely. Uh, If you haven't seen the video, head over to YouTube. Mm. There's a full recap vlog of the night. Uh, Dale, Elliot and I, we had an absolute ball. So um, the reaction of all the knockouts, everything, white towels, big boys throwing hands, Mm. you can check it out. Uh, The next one, like you said, was Junior Parlor versus uh, the polar bear, Ben Hannant. Junior comes out and he's had a couple of fights as well. Same with Benny Hannant. And we know how tough and resilient Ben Hannant is. Junior lands a couple of big blows and the polar bear just keeps on getting up. Showed a lot of toughness, didn't he? Right, after he cops this first shot that I think you see in, in, in the video you posted where I'm thinking, well, that's the quickest fight of the night. It's over. And I, don't, I feel like his team were like, stay down, Ben. And he just he got back up and he actually landed a couple of shots on, on Junior after that too. But Junior Paolo is... I mean, he's the real deal. Yeah, he is. And it'll be interesting to see who he fights next offseason because I'm sure um, he will. The next fight of the night was uh, Big Nelson, a Sofa Solomona versus your man, Jay Wall. Mm. Um, You you had Jay Wall in your multi, and unfortunately it didn't go your way. But uh, Big Nass, mate, he's up a cup early. Again, and another, you know, respectful performance from Jay Wall to land that blow on his chin and then get back up again. 
That video is still around on every social media <laughs> outlet because so many people thought Jared <laughs> lost a tooth. Yeah. I still don't 100% know what it was that went flying, a bit of plastic from Nelson's glove or, or whatever. He must have a steel jaw. I, I spoke to Jay Wall after it uh, and he said, oh, I didn't think he hit me that hard. I said, oh, you've got to watch the replay. <laughs> yeah, I spoke to Jay Wall the next day and he was like, man, I just couldn't get in there. The reach was just too much. Yeah. Um, but... Like we've always said along the whole line, so much respect for these fellas uh, getting in there. In the next fight, we were tipped, we were completely wrong about this next fight. It was mm. Tavita Pangai Jr. in his first professional bout against Frank Amado. Given, I'm pretty sure, two weeks' notice, big Frank. We just thought he was plucked off the street, going to get knocked out in the first round. We were unbelievably wrong, weren't we? That was, and again, like a new fan of boxing. That made me enjoy it even more. Frank Amato, I think around 40. Uh, Tavita Pango Jr., first fight since retiring from the NRL. Um, both of them looked great. It went six rounds. It was the longest fight Tavita's ever had. Both men were gassed. But they just threw haymaker after haymaker. Almost the entire... Every round had, a, I reckon, a 25-second stretch where they were just throwing bombs at each other. Yeah, this was... Uh, and I, at the end of the fight, I was standing... I was up on my feet. Yeah. And as much as the crowd were, too, it was just phenomenal. It was the, awesome. The work rate, the punches landed, both yeah. of them just eating punches and then going back in, um, defending punches. Frank looked great. His technique was great. Tavita looked good. Tavita looked like, you know, he's got a lot to build on. If that's, mm. you know... Um, I know he's had a couple of fights before, but if he's moving into now as a more full-time focus, he's, you know, got some, um, I guess, progression to go, but a, a great place for him to start. I'm not sure who he called out at the end of the fight. It was a, it was um, a top 10 ranked fighter. Yeah. I, I know that uh, in the state, but um, yeah, Frank Amato. I, yeah. I didn't know who he was before that. and. Yep. That was it now was we do. Awesome. So Frankie, yeah. props to you. Mm. Um, what a performance! The next one was uh, the headline footy fight of the night, which was Regan Campbell versus Jason Tamalalo. Regan Campbell Gillard got the uh, the decision on points. Yep. Um, obviously disappointing for Jace, but good for experience for him to get in the ring, wasn't it? Yeah, shout out to him too because I I snuck in to see him after that fight, and it wouldn't have been more than fifteen minutes after the fight. He was backstage, and there was a bunch of kids that were. Uh, grabbing photos and whatever, and he was making the effort when I'm sure he was just gutted. Uh, spoke to him and said he felt like he was a bit gun shy. Said he felt like there was an incident for those that missed it where his gloves were tied up the wrong way on one of them. He said that put him off a bit because it delayed the start. Uh, and you sort of saw it because as the fight went on, he he, he looked comfy, um, but he started. I don't know whether he was nervous or, or whatever, but. He said he wants to get back in there, so... Yeah, well, he definitely left it till the probably the third round. Reggie probably mm. won the first two, and Jace won the last one, mm. where Jace was going forward and, and landing a few shots. So, got no doubt we'll see a big, uh, big hulky back in the ring. And, um, mate, who... who who are some of these next fighters? Like who does Junior Palo fight next, Big Nelson? Can you match up any of these guys for next year or any other NRL players you can think of that would be good in the ring? Well, I mean... I'm not too worried about being good in the ring. I, I want the dream <laughs> matchups. Yeah, I know J Wild did call out Jai Arrow after it said he's a pest, he's a cat. I Aren't hate mates? him. He also said he's the godfather of my son. Um, <laughs> well, in terms of Paolo Pal um, Nelson, yeah, that would be good. Um, but then you know the big rivalries you see on the field. So Reese Walsh, Jerome Luai. I, I don't know what it would take. <laughs> To make that happen. <laughs> it won't happen. But I'm just saying it would be unbelievable. <laughs> or even make it a state of origin night. So go positions that year. So if Reese Robson's the starting nine for New South Wales next year, Harry Grant, you know what I mean? Or Ben H Ben Hunt if he starts. A state of origin battle on the reef, sign me up. Yeah, that'd be that'd be good. I know you're pushing for halfbacks to get in the ring, but I can, you know, I was stop, thinking Adam stop, Reynolds. It's not happening. Adam Reynolds, Chad Townsend. It's not happening. Not Two happening. of the most annoying men I've ever met. Not Adam Reynolds, Chad Townsend. Not happening. I'm not doing it ever. Yeah. So don't even talk about it. What about retirement? And it's here's a lot of money. No. Lot of money. No. Lot of money. No. Fund your podcast for 20 years. <laughs> and you can wear headgear 
No. And you can have the lightest, uh, like the most padded gloves possible. All right, maybe then. There you go. All right. Um, yeah, so it was a great night. Uh, Battle on the Reef, Townsville Intervention Convention Centre Entertainment, sorry. Um, and shout out to Fighter Promotions for having us on the night. Mm. Um, Stan Sport, what a night. It was great to have such an awesome event in Townsville and it was great to see the community get right behind it. So um, we really appreciate that. We'll move on to the next part of today's show and we're going to preview uh, the Pacific Tests, which are starting this weekend. Um, Australia versus Samoa in what is a rematch of the World Cup final from the end of last year. There's a few uh, debutants in the Kangaroos side. Um, we'll quickly run through the team for the Kangaroos. Tedesco, Edwards makes his debut. Hamaso makes his debut. Katoni Staggs makes his debut. Selwyn Cobo makes his debut. Munster, Cherry Evans, Payne Haas, Ben Hunt, Tino, uh, Cam Murray, Liam Martin, Isaiah Yo, and then on the bench they've got Harry Grant, Lindsay Collins, Pat Carrigan, and Ruben Cotter, who gets married the day after a test match on Sunday here in Townsville. And I spoke to the big fellow this morning, and, um, mate, uh, he's just hoping that the Tal Samoa will take a little bit easy on him. He doesn't get any black eyes for, for the big day on Sunday. But another big event happening in Townsville, mate, any uh, any thoughts on this game against um, what's likely going to be, again, a, a quality Samoa team? That Samoan side on paper is unbelievable. It's probably only the halves you're like, oh, OK, maybe Australia has advantage because I think Stephen Crichton's playing six, Dejan Arcee in seven. But um, I'm excited for Dylan Edwards. I don't know how we go playing on the wing, but that's obviously a reward for the couple of seasons he's had. Yep, definitely. And there was a lot of talk around Dylan Edwards, you know, missing origin selection and now... Um, you know, he's going to make his kangaroos debut. And um, I think there was news this morning saying that he's missing his brother's wedding yeah. to play, which is phenomenal. And, and, like, pe- and people people keep saying, oh, he should be playing fullback. And people keep having this argument. And, and I sit there, whether you're a Teddy lover or you're, you're not, he was the captain at a World Cup we just won. How do you dump him from a team that's having success? If the Australian team is not having success, then fair enough, maybe you think about some things. But if he's winning in that position, I, I don't understand the argument. Plus, what did they, the Roosters just did in the final series when they had no right, you know? Yeah, no right I, to I just do what they did. I don't know if it's an anti-Teddy agenda or whatever it is online. I just it it makes me cranky. A few internet opinions make me cranky. This one does because yeah. again, he just led us to a World Cup win. He has not put a foot wrong in that Australian jumper. I understand that Reese Walsh and Callum Pong, etc., are in incredible form. But these are young kids that will get their opportunity. At the yep. moment, Teddy's the leader. He's the man. Who's pushing these agendas? Because let's, let's get them. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, we'll quickly uh, touch on some of the notable selections in the Tawa Samoa team. So um, our guy, Murray Tolangi, um, unfortunately, did, yeah, didn't yeah. make the Aussie squad. So he's in uh, uh, Tawa Samoa. Um, Isaac Tongo is in the centres. Young Tonal Mapea, Brian To'o, Stephen Crichton, um, Dejan Arce. Their forward pack, which is pretty big, Stefano Utoikamanu, Gordon Chan Kam Tong from Manly. Junior He's a character. He is. Yeah. I've heard that from Woodsy. Junior Parlaw is the front row. Our back row, oh, sorry, tell us some old back row. Luciano Le Lua, another cowboy. Connolly Lemuelu, Keenan Palacia, and then their bench is Spencer Lenu, Terrell May, Helam Lukey, and Ronald Vulcan. What a bench that is. That it. Spencer Lenu, Terrell May, Helam Lukey. Powerful. It's a really handy bench, and they're a really good side. I, I think, um, I think minus Australia, and, and look, they could get the chocks this weekend, but minus Australia, I, I do think they're the second best team in the world at the moment. Yep, I, I agree, and I think traditionally, like you know, you said before, Stephen Crichton's having to play in the five eight position. Mm. Um, probably because their lack of depth in that position. I think you know, you look at some of these Pacific nations, and predominantly they're main or their best players are forwards mm. you know they usually always have big packs I mean you just look at Tonga with you know um, Jason Tamalalo um, you know Kaloa Matangi um, and the likes mm. you know big name players but their halves haven't really been you know as notable mm. so um, that might I guess weaken them a little bit there with Crichton not having played 5-8 mm. um, as much but I still think you know, he's a freak of a player, so he'll be dangerous whichever position. And who, who's on their wings again? So Muzz and... Their wings Toto. are Muzz and To'o. So, so this, <laughs> this is the depth of Samoa. Greg Marju in that squad misses out. That, that's how good their back line is. Yep, that's right. And you got got uh, jerseys 18 to 21. Royce Hunt, Justin Matamua, Greg Marju, as you just mentioned, and Tommy Talau as well, who, yep. you know, 
He's um he's off you to know, Manly, I think. Off to Manly yep. when, and would probably do a great job if he was playing as well. So he'll probably get his opportunity um, over the next few weeks. Um, DCE comes in at halfback with Nathan Cleary out and Nico. Not a bad replacement. Definitely. Nico <laughs> Hines makes, um, he's in the squad as well. I think yep. he's 18th man. Um, do you think, question for you, David Fafita is missing out of this squad. He was, you know, second row of the year, Daily M mm. second row of the year and had a pretty good origin series and. Um, is is he hard done by by missing out on this team? Oh, I just a squad. Who who would you replace? Mm. And, and I I agree with you, but there's, there's always going to be selection. Who, who are the back rows for show? Liam yeah. Martin and Liam Martin and Cam Murray. <laughs> who are, who are them? Are you going to tap on the shot? And then yet. 18 to 21 is Nico Hines, yep. Jake Travojevic, Tom Flegler, and Val Holmes. Yeah. So I just outstanding, yeah, but that Aussie side is yep. so good for a reason. Yeah. So big game. Aussies are playing Samoa here, uh, Queensland Country Bank Stadium on Saturday night. It's going to be a, a huge game. Another question for you. What do we what do you think of tier the tier two nations now and the rise that has happened? With the likes of Tonga, Samoa, Papua New Guinea, mm. Fiji, it is unbelievable for the game, isn't it? Well, I think it's made the international game exciting again, and I don't mind saying I think there was a long period of time there where, um, if I heard an Australian game was coming up, I'd I'd probably watch it, but I wasn't overly phased by it. But now, if any of those teams are in action, your Tongas, your Samoas, your New Zealand, England, or whatever, England's another one that that. A lot better than they were years ago, and and I don't know if that's the quality of the Super League, um, but that transcends to the to the women's game because before the men on Saturday, the the Aussies play New Zealand. There's some number. I mean, Tamika Upton is going to be out there again on the New Zealand side of things. They got this beast of a centre called Mele Hufunga. I think she just won Brisbane's Rookie of the Year. She was amazing. She scored four tries against the Cowboys when she played them. Yep. She's a beast. So yep, yep. In, in both aspects, it's going. And, and for the fans, for myself and, and fans, it's awesome. Yep, I absolutely love it. As a rugby league fan, and I think, you know, Jason Tamalalo and, you know, Andrew Fafita deserve yep. a lot of credit for, for the rise of this. And, and I, that'll be a legacy that those two guys will leave long behind once they finish playing. I mean, Andrew's obviously finished now. But for them to... You know, Sean, the the Origin jerseys and the big test match payments and go to a smaller nation and represent their family and their heritage and just build that up. I think the legacy is unbelievable. Would you agree? Yeah, well, what, what do you think was the turning point? Was it when Tonga beat Australia in, was it 17? I can't yeah. remember the exact year. Yeah. Was that... Do you think when it evened out a bit? Yeah, definitely. And I think now, you know, it, it took a little bit of time, but now it's like we're talking about Samoa beating Australia mm, with their team. Realistically. And we're talking about guys who are choosing to represent these Tier 2 nations and their families mm. over Australia. The um, Watch the World Cup, as I'm sure you did, and there were some early mornings there, but just some wonderful moments and... The Stephen Crichton field goal to send Samoa into the grand final after being decimated by England, and I think the first game of the tournament. Uh, yeah, it's like I said, it's made international rugby league exciting again. For for me, as I watch a bit of rugby as well, I always liked the club stuff in league, and I like the international side in union. Now I hardly watch union at all. I found the World Cup really hard to watch, um, and the international game in rugby league is flying. Yep, I couldn't agree more with you. I still think, I still think there's a ways to go with yep. um, international rugby league and Pacific rugby league. I think we can get these guys more money, more relevance, mm. having games in, you know, Tonga or Samoa potentially one day. Like that'd be absolutely phenomenal. Game more game like a Why game not? Fiji PNG. Like mm-hmm. there's talk about in the NRL expanding to an 18th team in Papua New Guinea. Like w- would players back that? I think so. I mean. Obviously, the, I, I assume the squad would predominantly be made of PNG players. They talk about them being based maybe out of Cairns to make it easier travel. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously, it'd be it'd be interesting to see the logistics around it all yeah. and the safety of how it all would happen. Um, but 
one thing I know about PNG is their fans, they're cut, like their national sports rugby league. Mm. So they've got you know the fan base to do it. Um, it's just more about I guess the 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 structure logistics logistics of yeah. how it will happen. But um, that's one to keep an eye on. Be unbelievable. Yep. Um, definitely. So, uh, where do we think this game is won on the weekend? For I'll start. I think, and I mentioned it before. I just think that the cl- the the class of the Australian halves and spine will overcome the Samoan team. Mm. Like you look at the Samoan team, some fr- absolute freak plays. But I just think you know the class of Cherry Evans and Munster and Harry Grant and Ben Hunt. I feel like these guys are you know, the top of their games, know exactly what to do and when to do it. And I just think that the forward packs are pretty evenly matched is what we'd expect, but that the spine for me is, is where it's going to be won. Yeah, I mean, I won't dispute that. You know, Cherry Evans and Munster, I'm not trying to um, uh, besmirch Stephen Crichton and Dejan Arce, but two totally different sets of players there. Um, outside of that, the teams are relatively even on paper. I think uh, yep. I, I still I, I can't wait for this one. Some of the big boys in the back line, both back lines are actually. Has who's playing fullback for Samoa? Is, is the young Melbourne kid? Yes, it is uh, Suolavi Falongo. Yeah, so yeah. I, I hope um, people got a chance to watch this kid when Melbourne and Brisbane rested all their players the last round of the year. He played in that game. Oh my god, he he's looks a talent. good. Super talent. I think he only played half the game. Scored two tries. Set up another one. Uh, he'll be exciting to watch this weekend. Yep, he looks the goods, and he'll be one to keep an eye on um, as Pappenhausen comes back, and mm. they've got Nick Meany as well. So Storm will, will potentially have a few headaches in the future with this young kid because he's going to be an absolute player. Um, all right, well, that's it. The the, the, the Pacific Test, um, it's going to be a huge game this Saturday night. Um, my next question for you is, are the players playing too much football at the moment? I know I have my opinion on this, and I'll, get, I'll let you go first. As okay. A, as a fan? Uh, yeah, as someone that doesn't have to put my body through it. <laughs> I, I'd I'd probably rather see it while there's still a bit of momentum in footy, which there is at the moment. Um, so you want to have an international season. I don't know if you can have it during the year with Origin and everything else in there and with an extra game on the calendar now anyway. Um, I, I like the structure. Uh, I like that it's not long after footy, not far removed, because I haven't forgotten about rugby league yet. I haven't fallen in love with the cricket summer just yet. Um, so uh, for me, I say play on. Yeah, I, I think I still think our top guys are playing too much footy. Like, you know, you look at the NRL season, it's 24 games, 27 weeks. So there's three buys in there. So mm-hmm. those three weeks, it's still you're still working, you're still training. Uh, then you've got four-game final series. And now you're going into a test series plus Origin. Mm-hmm. So some guys are playing Origin, backing up two days later to play an NRL game, which back in the day it was just like, you know, it's a show of toughness. Now it's just like, it's insane. I mean, I've seen some of our guys, wa- you know, rock up to train and unable to walk mm-hmm. and then just throw themselves out there and play the next day. Like, it is phenomenal. And you know, that's the testament to some of these guys and the toughness they show. But... I oh know. I just think something potentially maybe there's something to give there potentially in the future with with the schedule and the calendar. Like I, I think it can be can be cut short, well, shorter. Well, how when the international season finishes? When does preseason start? Well, if your if your team doesn't make the eight and you've done less than four preseasons, you're back in November one. Right. Okay. So, yeah, right. <laughs> so you don't get much of a break. So. You know, well, the breaks are seven weeks mm. for less than four pre-seasons and nine weeks for more than four pre-seasons. So, so is that set up through the RLPA? Yeah, it's yep. okay. the RLPA load management, right. which is, you know, nine weeks is a great... What about a big dog like you? You're back in January? No, nah, I'm back in, I'm back yeah. in uh, November. Yeah. Back in November with uh, the rest of the boys, ready to rip in to... Uh, I tell you what, guys, that's going very quickly though. The pre- the uh, I don't season. know. Look, you're a professional rugby league player, and it's the dream for so many people I, out there. Yeah, and I, yeah. I, know, I know you're not, um, but you're right. It is a really short break when you think about it. I mean, yeah. it's just about over, mate. Yeah. You're almost back at work. I am. I am. And like, I, I love training. I lo- I'm very blessed. I'm very grateful for mm. my position, and I train a lot in the off season because yep. I enjoy it. So, um, but I'm talking about like our top. Top tier guys, like the guys that play all all season, plus Origin, mm. plus Test matches. Like, yep. you know, these guys. We just got to make sure that these guys like get looked after and have their time off. You know, because they're like the the peak, 
the best players in our game. So we want we want to make sure they're on the field. Well, you guys f- felt the effects of that probably to start this season with all the boys coming back from the World Cup, particularly a lot of young guys like um, Maya and, and Muzz and whatever that hadn't done the longer schedules before and yep. then getting back straight into club stuff, they looked a little bit tired to start the season. Yeah, definitely. I know that um, Yeah, I'm sure the next time they do a World Cup, they'll do it a little bit differently with regards to their return and things like that because that obviously did drag on for a long time, the mm. World Cup, um, which only happens once every four years. But, yeah, why not talk about and try and do things better in the future? Uh, I say, mate, let's go over quickly. There's another game happening as well this weekend. The, uh, the PNG Kummels take on the, the Cookies, the Cook Islanders, and... I want to give a quick shout out to our guy, our North Queensland youngster, Zach Laybutt, yep. making his. I know he played in the PMs game the other week, but now he's actually making his test debut for the Kummels with his brother, Kyle Laybutt. Um, proud North Queensland boys. Both have some big uh, PNG heritage. This And Rob Derby's in there as well, yep. um, another uh, cowboy. This is awesome to see for the Laybutts, isn't it? Yeah, well, you said before, PNG, the only country in the world where rugby league is a national sport. Um, oh, I like Kyle Laybutt as a player, for those that maybe haven't seen him. Actually debuted. Defence? Yeah. Wow. Debuted with the Cowboys. He had, i trying to remember who it was a couple of years ago. I think it was Dan Russell who was playing for PNG as well, uh, who's now at St. George. And he had Kyle Laybutt at 5'8", on the left side of the field. He had uh, Dan Russell with him as well. And you had Viliami Kikau running at him from Fiji. And this is Kikau, it must have been last year when he was just, no one could stop him. And it was the best he was defended all year by a bloke, well, two blokes at that time playing Reggie's. Yeah, Cole Labert is an incredible defensive half. And, and I know you can sing the praises of Zach, you can tell us more, but everyone I speak to about Zach, they keep it really simple. They say he is a player. He will be a player for a long time. Yep, definitely. I've definitely noticed about that with Kyle. His defence is phenomenal. So keep an eye out for that if you're watching the game. Uh, Zach, very quiet kid. Works really hard. Um, got a big future in the game. and He'll, he'll push for a starting yep. spot come preseason. I'll definitely. with you guys. Definitely. He'll get a chance to compete for the starting spot, which is which is great because he's he's a great kid. He works hard. He's another Townsville, a North Queensland you know, junior. So it's always great to keep uh, local juniors in the system. Mate, that's some, um, some notable inclusions in the PNG side. Alex Johnson is at fullback. We just spoke about Rob Derby, Zach Laybutt and Kyle Laybutt. Nene McDonald is on the wing. Lachlan mm-hmm. Lamb. Who's just had a great season over there with uh, the Lee Leopards? I think his dad just won Coach of the Year. Yep, uh, which is which is unbelievable. They won the Challenge Cup, so congrats to them. Uh, who else they've got? They've got here uh, Jack DeBellin makes his mm. PNG debut. Not sure of the heritage connection there, well, but I think it was grandmother's side. I, I was reading. So yeah, he, he makes that forward pack even a little bit stronger. Yep, and I think uh, I love seeing this because um, I, I think that he will have a really great time in PNG camp and learning about his heritage and his family. Um, so I'm really excited to see him play. And then over on the cookies, you've got uh, Isan Masters, KL Iro, uh, Brad Takarangi, uh, Tevin Arona, Zane Tedavano as some of the notable players there. And these guys are playing on Sunday at 3 p.m. at... Uh, at Moors, Port Moresby, oh, it's PNG. In PNG. So That'd this is going to be a pretty wild, big game, mate. We'll move on to um, some other sporting news um, that is relevant at the moment. Mm. And you touched on it before about the World Cup, the Rugby World Cup. Yep. I'm honest with you. I didn't watch a game because it was late. Mm-hmm. I did see a lot of highlights, but what is happening with the Wallabies at the moment? I'm not a union head, Chad, so I'm not going to try and break down the political side of it, which seems to be cooked. Um, Speaking to people involved in rugby union, selections are a bit off. I understand what they were trying to do with the ad campaign before to try and make the Wallabies relevant again, but sort of backfired a little bit. Uh, I tried to watch a couple of games, really struggled, I won't lie to you. I saw Portugal beat Fiji the other day. That was pretty cool, seeing a... um, a bottom tier nation do what they do in the celebrations afterwards, but yeah, this is probably the first rugby world cup that I just have not been able to get into. Yeah, I, I'm the same. Like I said, I didn't watch a game because it was the games were pretty late, and mm. I'm not that into it. But obviously, I follow the sporting news. I'm a sports addict. Love me sport, mm. and you know, you hear you know 
murmurs and talks about Eddie Jones potentially meeting with other countries. And He met with you know, Japan a couple yeah. of weeks out from it. And I know that he denied it, and I don't know if he's exactly true. You have to take him on his word. Mm. But um, if it is true, it's, you know, it's, yeah, pretty shocking. Uh, I, I like Eddie, though. I, I actually like him as a coach. I like what he's done in the game. I like... I like his aura. I like he's got a bit of arrogance. Uh, he's got a bit of swagger. Do you think is he the man to continue to coaching the Wallabies, or do they need to make a change so early? In I think he's on a four year deal. I think it would be a a big part with the playing group, wouldn't it? And I'm I'm sure you've been involved in teams in the past where unfortunately they weren't 100 percent bought into you know what they were being sold. So. Uh, it would probably have to be a conversation with them. I, I don't know what their relationship with Eddie is. I know past players, you speak to your Wendell Sailors, your Drew Mitchells, they say he was unbelievably good at, um, you know, managing the play. Like, that superstar team he had back in the day with your Wendells, with your Sterling Mortlocks and all them, mm. was it was unbelievable. And that was more player managing rather than... Yep finding a way to get the best out of them because they were superstars. Yeah. And now that, this gig's a bit different. And that's, the, I guess, the, the Aussie rugby that I remember. Those mm. guys you just mentioned, you know, George Gregan, Sterling Mortlock. Larkham. Larkham. George Larkham. Smith. I, I knew all the rugby players. Yeah. Then, mate. Respectfully, I don't know a single player. They used to put the cards in the wheat bix. It was that big. Yeah. And now... If they did that, well, who's this? And they oh, used to wear the gloves with yeah. the fingertips. Oh, you know? And everyone's like, Kiddo, <laughs> yeah. Phil War, Matt yeah. Dunning, unbelievable. Yeah, like that's that's rugby, man. That's now, who played 10 this World Cup? I could not tell you. Yep, I'm 100% couldn't. I, yep. I, I agree with you. I know uh, my good friend Matt Rogers, who has played for the Wallabies, had a distinguished career in both rugby and rugby league, had some comments uh, on radio the other day about the grassroots of rugby and the programs of rugby just aren't there. Well, and it's expensive. That's one thing I do know. It's expensive for kids to play, and it's a private school sport, mm. which makes it tough when so many of our athletes come out of state school systems. Yep. Blue collar yep. rugby league, white collar rugby. Yep. So I, I don't know. Yeah, it just probably doesn't resonate with the Australian people because most Australians are blue collar, hard working, yep. you know, your everyday state school families, and we sort of gravitate towards rugby league so rugby union have got a lot of work to do from the top down it's not just the wallabies it's the whole of rugby probably mm -hmm. failing in the country rugby league is just absolutely dom dominating the thing with rugby i think is that it has so much potential like i know they've signed Suali'i, who's heading over there you know to be the poster boy and he will he will bring eyeballs and he will be that guy i think if he goes he'll go if he goes he'll go uh, but yeah, I just think I think they do have potential. Do you think they've got potential, or do you think it's just doom and gloom? Oh, I don't care about it anymore. <laughs> I, I don't. I, I wish I did. I got room in my heart for more sport. Always, I watch <laughs> underwater bocce, but at the moment, underwater bocce. <laughs> at the moment, I don't. All right. Uh, the next thing happening at the moment in the sports world is uh, the AFL trade period, and um, this is quite an interesting concept that the AFL do. Obviously, they have the draft and the trade period. Their trade period runs from Friday, October six, until October thirteenth. So, as we record this, it's the eleventh of October right now. Um, do you think NRL? This could be an NRL thing one yes. day, a, a trade and a yes. trade period, and a draft. What do you give me your thoughts? Uh, I think the draft might be a while off, but the trade period, yeah, uh, I I like it. I mean, you guys get affected more in house, but as a fan, when I see um, my favourite club and I see news of oh, Willie Wayne sign with the Dolphins halfway through a season, oh, he's going to have to make a decision by June, July, or whatever it might be. That must be so disruptive for fan bases, for playing groups, for coaching staff, for all of that. Um, I'd love to get your take, but I would absolutely love to see a post-season trade period so we don't hear about this bullshit during the season. Yeah, it's a big, I guess, American sports thing. Obviously, they do have free agency mm. after the season. They're unable to sign contracts until after their current season, where with us, you know, if your next year's the last year of your contract... November 1, effectively, you're allowed to speak to other clubs to sort some employment opportunities. Yep. At the moment, the current system gives players the most, I guess, flexibility on securing a long-term deal. Kay. So, November 1, effectively, I could sign a deal for after next year mm. for three years, right? Mm. Without playing a game next year. 
So I haven't had to play a game yet. I've just secured my employment for the following years. That is great as a player. If I wasn't allowed to, say, until a certain time throughout the season, say round six, ten, whatever it is, but in round four I get injured and I'm off contract, you know, my ability to sign a long-term deal now for that three years potentially isn't there. So as a player, you know, for the players, I think the system at the moment, while I understand your perspective from a fan's point of view, from a player's point of view, selfishly, it allows us to secure our employment without the risks. But, you, uh, and I, I think you just said it, you can get that as a fan, again, and I'm just, let's just use an example. If my favourite player is, uh, I don't know, Cameron Munster at Melbourne and the season starts and he announces, oh, not this season, but next season I'm going to be moving to here, there, everywhere. It's really hard as a fan to watch that year knowing that, you know, he's on the way out. And and I know you guys put 100% in regardless, but fans can't help but question, oh, is his head going to be there 100%? Is uh, the playing group still bought into him knowing that he doesn't want to be there next year or he's signed for bigger money elsewhere next year? Security, I, I understand, but... It is difficult for the fans, I yep. reckon. I fully, fully respect and understand that. And I I get that. I think the biggest situation like this at the moment was Stephen Crichton. Yep. You know, I'm not sure when he signed with the Bulldogs last year. I'd say it might have been sometime in November, maybe. Mm-hmm. So he signed a long time early, you know, without playing round one for the Bulldogs. You know, and obviously they had a successful season, they won, and that's always not the case with some other players. But, you know, speaking on the players' behalf, it's like if you sign 12 months out somewhere else, you're doing it for a better opportunity. And, you know, I don't think you can question, you know, I guess every every situation is different, mm. right? So I don't want to speak on that too much. But he's probably the most notable example of, of that happening, you know? Well, could we meet in the middle then and say, okay, we can we can keep the ones where you know we're signed a year in advance or whatever, but stop the during the season stuff? Because again, as fans of the game, there's nothing more disheartening than five rounds in you find out you know old mates heading off next year yeah. or, or whatever. Even even the mid season stuff, I'm not a huge fan of. Yeah, yeah, like I don't know. Like I said before, the flexibility that allows players to just sign when they can to. Pr- you know, secure their future. Mm. I really like, and I'm obviously a player, so I'm I'm yep. I'm staunch on the player side, but I'm compassionate to the fans as well. So um, I know I sat in on the RLPA collective bargaining agreements with the NRL, and this was a heated topic for a long time. The NRL wanted to do it post season. The RLPA said no way. They wanted to do it mid season. The RLPA said. No way. So um, I know there's some some uh, things that have been brought in that are different. That um, where if you've been offered a contract, your current club gets a right of reply to make a, a deal without That's obs- right, yeah. obviously just being able to lose you straight away. Um, the finer details on that, I'm not 100 percent sure, but I could get them for you. Um, but I know, like I said, it has been a um, a topic of conversation. So it's one to keep an eye out. Obviously, like we said before, American sports. Uh, are heavy on drafts and trades and all that stuff. And, you know, an NBA player is getting traded. One day he's playing for, you know, the Phoenix Suns. The next day he's playing in Miami for mm. the Heat. So um, with NRL, things are a little bit different. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's one to keep an eye on. Uh, mate, next, uh, let's talk some NFL uh, at the moment. Your Bucks are flying pretty good on the weekend they had the boy i saw baker went out to uh oklahoma and had some fun mm-hmm. went on the pat mcafee show and um two of the world's biggest lunatics put <laughs> together for, uh, a rugby league example would be putting cameron munster and scott drinkwater in the same room and just letting <laughs> yeah. them do whatever they want oh, i absolutely i love pat yeah. mcafee he's someone i watch a lot mm-hmm. every single day and i take notes on him so for anyone, and so many people are starting podcasts and, and doing YouTube stuff and, and whatever, um, if that's something that you ever want to do, you should. if you haven't watched Pat McAfee, uh, for me, he's been the best in the game at it for a long yeah. period of time. I love him, and I take a lot of my inspiration off Big Pat, so i mm. um, big fan of him, mate. Let's go through some of the results on the weekend. The Bears win their first game for what is nearly a whole year. Yeah. I watch this game. They beat the Commanders 40-20, to 20, absolutely dominated. Yep. 
This is the like the Bears. They didn't look like the Bears. Yeah, the Bears might be back. The Bears might be back. Justin Fields was phenomenal. Um, his wide receiver, who I have in fantasy in one of my leagues, DJ Moore. DJ Moore. That's right. We just went off three touchdowns. Just two hundred and something yards. Oh, mate, an absolute beast. The Jaguars upset the Bills twenty-five to twenty. Dale, your Texans lose to the Falcons. 21 to 19. Producer Dale, who's sitting behind, um, flicking the switch over here for us. Mate, just give us some quick t- uh, comments on the end of the Texans game. Anything there? Uh, I don't know. Hey, that's a um, <coughs> touchy subject. <laughs> no, I, reckon, I reckon we've still uh, we've got some, some for the, uh, the next game, but unfortunately it just wasn't our game. I'll tell you what, you've got to be happy with uh, CJ Stroud. Oh. Dale, any any quick comments on CJ Stroud there or no? I'm not super into it, so I don't know who who uh, who that is. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I only just got into it at the start of the season, so yeah. So at the start of the year, we just said to Dale, "Who's yeah. your NFL team?" He just picked the random one and said the Texans. So respect, respect to him because they're actually uh, they're two and three at the moment, and they're usually garbage, and they're mm. not garbage at the moment. Uh, the Lions. Pumped the Panthers 42 24. The, the Panthers have got the number one draft pick, Bryce Young, at 0 5 at the moment. They are hot garbage. And and what they've done too is their number one pick this year is going to the Bears. So if if they finish last or somewhere near it, the Bears are going to get another number one pick. Yeah, Jesus. Uh, what else we got here? We've got the uh, the Colts beat the Titans 23 to 16. Mm. Uh, the Dolphins beat the Giants 31 to 16. Saints absolutely pumped the Patriots 34 nil. The Patriots last week, I think they lost 35 nil. Was it? It was something similar. 35 33, 34, think, yeah. 33 nil, and then 34 nil. Mm. Back to back, Bill Belichick's biggest losses in his career. You know what, um, and I don't mean to be vindictive here, but so many people when Tom Brady left New England to go to Tampa said um, he's a system quarterback. And if you're not an NFL watcher, essentially means he was only successful because he was in Belichick's setup at New England and if he goes somewhere else, he's going to stink. Obviously, Tom Brady goes to Tampa, wins the Super Bowl in his first season there. And for the Patriots, they haven't been back to the playoffs since. So Yeah. So people are very, very wrong. Uh, the Steelers beat the Ravens 17-10. to 10. Probably mm. the best performance from the Steelers all season, to be honest. Bengals beat the Cardinals 34-20. They looked a lot better. The Bengals, Jamar Chase, finally mm. uh, got some scores in fantasy, some touchdowns. The Eagles beat the Rams 23-14. The Rams were pretty solid. Their defense I thought was pretty good. That was actually a really entertaining game to watch. The Jets beat the Broncos 31-21. This was a bit of a grudge match. I know there was a... Plenty on the line in this one because Broncos coach Sean Payton said that uh, the current Jets assistant coach, who was the coach last year of the Broncos, did a garbage job. So they were they were all in. There was a lot of talk from them pre-game. This was a, a, an entertaining game, wasn't it? Yeah, well they, um, Sean Payton actually said it's the worst coaching job in NFL history that, right. that Nathaniel Hackett did, who, as he said, is an assistant or offensive coach at the Jets. After the Jets won, they had one game ball to give out, which they do to the best player each week. They actually gave it to Hackett, the coach, and yep. the players went nuts around him. And I know uh, Aaron Rodgers put a tweet out there saying, like, Hackett, great win for yeah. ha- hashtag Hackett. Uh, the Chiefs beat the Vikings 27-20. Are the Vikings done, just quickly? 1-4 and four at the moment. Kirk Car- Jamar Chase is on IR. Justin Jefferson. Uh, sorry, yeah. Justin Jefferson yeah. is on IR. Yeah. Um, uh, look, uh, talk tr- about tr- uh, trading Kirk. Best bit of business that... Any teams could do right now, in my opinion, uh, Vikings trade Kirk to the Jets and have him play. The, you know, Zach Wilson's tried his guts out, but Kirk can actually throw the ball. Get Kirk to the Jets for the rest of this year. Get, I don't know, a third or fourth round pick for him. And if you're the Vikings, you just tank. Yep. Yeah. Jeez, that's crazy. For people who might not know what tanking means, it means deliberately losing, and that's what they do in the NFL, uh, which is hard to believe. <laughs> 49 is uh, pump the Cowboys, 42 to 10. Are the 49ers the hot favourites at the moment, 5-0? and oh. I, I said that at the start of the year. The more I think about it, the more I think Philly. Mm, I like but but they're the best two, and I know it's easy to say that because they're both the two undefeated teams, but squad-wise, 
I love George Kittle, one of their players, got three touchdowns on the weekend. One of the celebrations lifted his shirt up and he just had a shirt underneath it that said F Dallas, which is <laughs> yes. amazing. I did see that. And I know Micah Parsons does his podcast as mm. well. I saw he was pretty... He didn't love that. He was pretty offended mm. by it. Uh, the Raiders beat the Packers 17-13. The Packers didn't look great. Neither team did. On Monday. Yeah, you're 100% right. You see the uh, Mark Davis, the Raiders owner, just sitting yeah, in the, the box. 70-year-old man with the 22-year-old girlfriend. Yep. <laughs> yeah, just shaking his head at, at the play. Mm. Um, mate, that's it. Let's wrap it up there. Um, yeah, the week in sports. We've got a big week. Uh, still plenty of happening, even though the NRL season is over. Cricket World Cup's on this weekend too. Cricket World so. Cup as well. So hopefully the Aussies can get going, mate. Mm. Um, and there's a big weekend this weekend, actually. We've got our golf day on Friday. We've got the te- going on the test match and then on Sunday, Ruben's wedding. So um, very busy, mate. But as always, thanks for jumping on. Enjoy your weekend, Chad. And if you enjoy the podcast, please make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you guys on the next episode. Mm-hmm.